Hello, uh, so it was recently asked of me, uh, specifically when I did a video uh, very recently on uh, my 20 favorite American words of all time, uh, whether any uh, words had sort of evolved from Native American and entered their way into the English language. And I said with abandon at the time that yes, of course, there'd been absolutely loads. So I went to the great effort this week of researching those very words. Now, it's very interesting, of course, uh, which words uh, did fall into English via Native American, uh, because predictably, I think if you know your history, history here, uh, a lot of them are to do, in fact almost all of them I would say, are to do with nature in some way, either through food, vegetation or animals or just things of that nature, <laughs> pun intended, um, and that's how it sort of came about with a lot of the words you will see on this list. Another thing that you'll see in common with a lot of these words is that uh, they came via Algonquian languages, and Algonquian languages are sort of a, a Native American family of languages that mostly formed and distributed around sort of what we know now as the East Coast of the United States, the Great Lakes region, and much of Canada. So thinking about that geographically, you can probably understand why it is that most of the words on this list uh, came from Algonquian languages. It's because English settlers, or European settlers uh, in general, of course, first hit the, uh, the eastern seaboard, as we would know it now, of the United States, and so interacting immediately uh, with natives at that time. In fact, because of that, a lot of the words on this list, specifically the English and interpretations of them um, emerged in the 1600s when settlers were uh, moving here. So with all that said and all that criteria applied, here are seven words that entered the English language via Native America. And so we're underway. Say hello to the word squash. Now, not the verb to squash, but the noun squash, as in the fruit, uh, which you can find here in North America. You can also find it throughout Central and South America. And it's, you know, it's something that I was not aware of until I moved to the United States. Very versatile fruit. It's one of those I don't think you really consider a fruit until you know that it is one, um, much like tomato in that, in that respect. But squash, a Narragansett word, Narragansett being a variety of Algonquian. And it's a shortening, they understand of the word, and I've got to make sure I get this right, Asciutasquatch. I probably didn't pronounce that quite correct, but um, you know, that's that's where it comes from. And Asciutasquatch literally means the things that may be eaten raw. I don't know how often I've eaten a raw squash, uh, but I have eaten it uh, in a soup. Uh, I think I've eaten it as sort of a uh, an alternative to uh, pumpkin pie, which uh, as I've stated before, I don't care for. Um, but uh, nonetheless, that is where the word comes from. <laughs> and that's not the only S word on this list. I'm not talking about the S word, though some people may say that this next entry occasionally smells like it. Oh, skunk. Thank goodness that skunks are exclusive to the Americas. Growing up, I didn't uh, have the misfortune of smelling that uh, whenever I was out in the woods, as I occasionally was. And uh, a skunk, you know, like I said, it is uh, sort of uh, native to uh, the uh, uh, the Americas, uh, North America included. And uh, that the word that we know today, skunk, um, it was first attested from about the 1630s. And it came from an Abenaki uh, word. And Abenaki, again, is an Algonquian language language. Now at first it was spelled more like this um, and is believed to have evolved ultimately from a, a sort of proto-Algonquian uh, word uh, which is either this or this. Meaning literally he who squirts or urinates. So lovely image. Uh, something that is a lovely image or at least for some people, I'm, I'm often annoyed by them at Christmas when they sing, is our next entry. I have a love-hate relationship with chipmunks, all right? Um, I think the actual rodent is, is rather adorable, rather cute. But when those those chipmunks start singing at Christmas in the really high-pitched voices, I want to throw the radio out of the window. Um, but that's not what we're talking about today, and Christmas is uh, thankfully behind us in that sense. Um, no, I'm talking about the word chipmunk. You wouldn't think it, would you, listening just to that word, um, that it evolved from uh, Native American languages, but indeed it did. Uh, there's evidence to suggest, though, that the original English spelling before the the one that we know today, uh, was more like this, chit monk. And that's because, and this is the belief, it came from the Ottawa word jitmo. Now, the Ottawa uh, dialect is spoken, of course, by the uh, Ottawa people uh, in Ontario and in northern Michigan. And who knows, if they are like squirrels fond of climbing trees, they may find themselves atop the following.
Yes, hickory. Uh, it's one of the sort of rare words on this list in that um, it isn't just found in the Americas. You will find uh, hickory trees in places like China and I believe even India. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, the English word hickory uh, came about uh, via uh, Native American, a Native American word, specifically again from Algonquin and even more specifically, I should say, from Powhatan, which is a uh, Virginia variety of Algonquian. And it uh, appears to be anyway, at least uh, just doing the research, it appears to be a short shortening of uh, one of several words. Among those are pokehickory, pokehickory, uh, and pohickory. Uh, probably, ultimately, though, it evolved from a proto-Algonquian word, which would be prokelhickora. Uh, try saying that after a few bevies. I couldn't, because I'd be dead. At least I wouldn't be playing dead, unlike our next entry. <laughs> Yes, possums. I don't think in all my time living in the United States I've actually encountered a possum that I can remember, uh, but they are certainly native to here, and in fact uh, North America in general, and even South America. I understand that they, uh, in fact, migrated from South America after the uh, two continents came together. That sort of natural migration was known as the Great American Interchange, where animals uh, from North America moved to South America, and vice versa, um, after the uh, two continents uh, came together. And, uh, like I said, possums were part of that, but uh, the natives uh, had a word for that specifically the speakers of Powhatan the, again the uh, Virginia Algonquian and uh, this was discovered actually by by settlers by English settlers uh, to uh, specifically uh, John Smith a writer and soldier that uh, was stationed uh, in fact uh, not just stationed at but uh, helped to found Jamestown in Virginia as well as the British writer William Strachey they both sort of recorded their interpretation of what they were hearing from uh, natives I believe in, in the case of John Smith he was even captured and uh, was only, in his own words, set free uh, when Pocahontas came to his rescue. Uh, that uh, has uh, maybe a lack of validity to it, or at least it's been called into question by historians. But I'm getting sidetracked. Nonetheless, these two came into contact with speakers of Powhatan and... Like I said, they noted down what they believed was their interpretation of what was being said to them uh, on the word possum. Wrote it down as kind of a possum, I think, something along those lines. And, and that's why you have the, the variant word, uh, opossum, uh, with the O at the beginning. And, uh, and that's how it came about. So that's really interesting. But uh, as you've seen already, we've already talked about skunk. We've talked about possums. Two animals, in fact, in this country that uh, are, are quite derided, I think, by people anyway, who don't really care for them but absolutely none of them can hold a candle to our next entry who is rather fond of going through your trash and being quite bothersome Now, I don't personally have any sort of bad experiences with raccoons, so I don't really think I can jump on that bandwagon. If anything, in fact, I have good experiences because I played Super Mario Brothers 3 and you could dress up in a raccoon suit and it was amazing because you could whip the baddies with your tail. Um, but I do understand that raccoons are a bit of a menace going through your trash, perhaps eating some of your wildlife, I don't know. But that doesn't stop the fact that the word is on this list and it did evolve, has evolved from uh, a Native American word. And once again, it is from a Powhatan word. Uh, it's very popular that and it makes sense, doesn't it? Because is, of course, Jamestown being one of the early towns to be settled in the United States by the English coming over, interacting. And once again, it was recorded by that man, John Smith, um, interacting with them. Um, he made a whole list, and I'd rather like to get a hold of this list of words that he heard. Some made it into the English language, some did not. But Raccoon was one of those. He uh, he noted it down, uh, the spelling, as Arachun, uh, spelled like this. That's my pronunciation. I don't know if that's correct. And uh, it's, it's just interesting that he would do that it evolved into the spelling that we know today but once again the word itself would not have originated uh, with the power tan it would have originated much earlier uh, in the sort of proto algonquian uh, language and the belief is that the uh, proto algonquian root is more akin to this arakun m again try saying that after a few whiskers that would actually make a great video wouldn't it no it probably would i'd be more annoying than the raccoons themselves instead it's final entry time don't know why i'm doing that voice Yes, who could forget the word hominy? I'm absolutely disgusted at myself for leaving it off my list of 20 greatest American words. But hominy, of course, not a word I was familiar with in England. And for the very good reason that uh, you don't really find the practice of making it uh, in England, or at least not that I was aware of. But hominy is, of course, a food that is produced from dried corn kernels. And that was a practice that was undertaken by certain native tribes as well. And that is, of course, why the word originated in Native America. And once again, it was with those uh, power town speakers 
Um, and again, once again, it was Mr. John Smith who uh, sort of transcribed what he heard um, in description of this process. And uh, he came up with uh, something close to what we have today, hominy. But the word again is most likely a shortening from uh, its original uh, native equivalent. Uh, we're not sure uh, exactly what that equivalent was. But some have suggested it came from either uh, Uskatahoman, I think I'm pronouncing that right, I'm probably not, um, or, and this is even harder, uh, Apominanash. I give up. You can see it, it's there on your screen. You can probably appreciate why it was shortened uh, when it went into, into English. Not enough whiskey to go around in those days. Actually, there's probably a lot of it on the Mayflower. I don't know, I've not looked into that. I would need a lot of whiskey if I'm on a ship for 60-something days. So that's it for this list of words that came about via Native America. I think there's definitely scope for doing another list of this uh, nature, and I will look into that uh, in the future. Let me know below which of these is your favourite words, and if you have any suggestions for that future video. Until next time, though, have a great time. Bye. Thank you for watching this episode of Distant Words. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe, and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and if you'd like to support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash lostinthepond.